You know what I think is a, a totally off the subject, but what I think is a design, a UI design flaw with the uh, Apple Watch that I found out the other day is the summon your phone button is right next to the silence button. And uh, I was out golfing and I thought there's some guy teeing off and I was right behind him. It's like, oh, I better silence my phone. And, and I did that and it, see if it does it. Yeah, there it did, it dinged, so. Let's turn it on. All right, so I'm guessing it's uh, about time to start. Um, welcome everyone, my name is Matt Chambers. I, uh, I work, uh, I'm somewhat of a serial entrepreneur. I live in Fargo, North Dakota. I've been using SketchUp for ages. Uh, I was a SketchUp trainer for a couple of years, 2007 and 2008, I believe. And during that time, I wrote material, traveled all over the country, giving classes to um, both public classes and private classes, uh, everything from just people who've never touched SketchUp to uh, large design firms like Sasaki Associates, Pixar. Uh, got to go there twice, that was a lot of fun. Went to a lot of schools. And then uh, over the years, I've, uh, I've got about 13 years of adjunct teaching, and it's not always SketchUp, but it's usually something digital related uh, within landscape architecture, which is my degree. So this is one of the things I'll show you today. And uh, we've got an hour, I repurposed some slides here, so I'll fire through them really quick. So it's, the title of this is Animation in SketchUp, and there's two ways to think of this. There's, there's animation in SketchUp, and there's animation with SketchUp. And the difference is, I want everyone to get a pretty good understanding of out of the box what SketchUp can actually animate. You're not going to be doing character animations and, and things like that, but if you think of animation as just uh, a sequence of images, you know, positioned such that they play back and give you the impression of movement, or something is changing. So there's a, there's a couple, you know, I'll show you both what you can do in SketchUp, some of the limitations. I'll show you a couple what I would call easy workarounds that involve uh, PowerPoint, but you can do the same thing in Keynote or Google Docs, and that's just taking out, still exporting from SketchUp to certain ways. Um, and then there's three plugins I want to go over, uh, or extensions. The, the really nice thing about SketchUp, I, I'm not sure where everyone's expertise level is at, but SketchUp has, has a ton of extensions. It's built such that it's easy for, I should say easy, I don't wanna speak on their behalf. I'm not a programmer, but there are lots of extensions that exist um, and there's, there's more than three that deal with animation, but I wanted to share three with you that, uh, that I think cover the gamut from something that's really simple, almost SketchUp-like, to something that's actually like flying a jet engine, but it's still kind of fun. So yeah, this is me. I guess my main source of income right now is at Aldevron, that's a biotech firm. I've spent about the uh, last 10 years using SketchUp from everything from designing kits, biologic kits that we send out, to working with the scientists and reconfiguring our labs, to even master planning our campus, which we just finally finished our first building. That was a very long, a long process. So again, this is, the, this is kind of the quick overview of what I'll show you today. And again, think of it, sketch, animation in SketchUp and animation with SketchUp, kind of two things. The first part is animation in SketchUp, and it's really tied to your scenes. Scenes are just a snapshot that hold one of seven things that you'll see here in a minute. And let's see, oh yeah, here's the three, the three extensions we'll look at, keyframe animation, SU Animate, which is made by the, uh, the SU Podium group. I don't know if any of those guys are here, but they actually, they also make it such that it plays really nice. So you could do an, a walkthrough, you can create the walkthrough with SU Animate and then use their rendering software to give you more of a photorealistic rendering than what you have in, in SketchUp. The first two are paid. I mean, they're very reasonable. These developers work their butts off. They're as passionate as anyone in the community. So. I'm all for supporting the developers, especially when they're like 20 or 30 bucks. I forget, there may be a little bit more. The, the Frito 6 animator, that one, that one is free, but that's the one that it's pretty insane. Um, I, I don't know if I'll get very deep into it. That's gonna be towards the end. So let's see here, scenes equal animations. Let me jump over just to show you some stuff. And uh, I'll be using this, let me close a couple of these guys up. So 
So out of the gate, you know, I've just got a simple block building here. Um, I'll, just, I'll just create a couple of scenes. And I'll do that by using the default views in SketchUp, which is this icon. It's kind of hard to see. I'm going to try something here. How is that zoom in? It kind of worked. All right. So those guys right there. And so top view, all those holder scenes, like the default scenes, that's it. To add, um, to add a real scene, the scene that allows you to start thinking about animation, there's three ways to do it. View, animation, add scene. Simple enough. And out of the box, this just creates a snapshot. So if I'm orbiting around and I'm inside of this building, if I click on that, it animates. It animates me back to that position. And it's going really slow because I forgot to change. I was doing something different, and my transitions are, are horribly slow. Let me, uh, let me fix that. <laughs> 10 minutes later. Um, so in the same place where you add an animation or add a scene, there's a settings. And it probably didn't open because there it is. I don't know why that took so long. I have it on four. Let's try that one more time. So I'm going to update this, which incidentally, that's how you update scenes. You just context click on them, update. Let's, let's go over here and add another one. Right click and add, second way to add a scene. One is from the view menu. The other, once you've got a scene, you can just right click and add. And these should, all right, that's a little bit more realistic. So. There you go. That's animation in SketchUp, right? We're just animating between our scenes. And if you've done any kind of animation, you're probably familiar with the concept of a keyframe. It's a, it's a frame that you specifically want. And um, if you've created like, animated GIFs in Photoshop, you can pick a keyframe, pick another keyframe, and let the software decide how to connect the two. And so what SketchUp is doing here is just that. It has a view, and it has another view, and it's giving you you know, what I would consider a comfortable transition between the two, but I will show you a couple, um, they're, they're limitations, but they're also trade-offs because SketchUp is a very elegant and simple interface. There's a bunch of different ways you can interpolate between two cameras. It's a straight line. Is it a curve? Do you ease in? Do you ease out? But where, where that's a problem, potentially, for some people is, let's say I'm going to plant myself right in front of this building. I'll be looking right in here. Let's, uh, let's open this door. Can you even catch that? What? Did someone say, how do you do that? So that is a dynamic component. Uh, it's a dynamic component that has a very, very simple on-click um, code that's plugged into it. So you know that's um, with SketchUp Pro, you can open up and play with dynamic components. And if you think about them, I don't want to go into detail, but it's like it's like an Excel spreadsheet meets a SketchUp model. You can put in formulas and a lot of if-then statements. So one of them is on click, do something. I could say change color, but uh, I could say change your scale. I could say add stuff, remove stuff. But on this one, it's just a shell. And there's two components inside of it. One is the actual child shell, and inside of that is a door. And that door has an axis, so it just says, hey, on click, animate that axis between 0 and 90. And that's all that's doing. So, um, What's probably more important, though, is what's happening at the core. Because all of these extensions that are available are essentially doing the same thing. There's just different ways to access the core of SketchUp and get it to do some neat things. So, okay, I'm here. Let me, let me do this. I'm going to update scene one, right click update, and then I'll take the walk tool. And the walk tool, um, a little tip on that is if you click and drag, just, you don't want to move it too far away. I wouldn't, it's not the, it's not the, it's not like playing a game. If any of you play games, it's, it's, I'm going up the stairs. All right, and I'm going to turn over here. And I see a lot of people doing this. So 
incidentally, this space, I modeled up this building from, it's actually, believe it or not, my house. Um, I found the 1969 blueprints, and uh, that's the kind of thing I entertain myself with. I decided to scan them in and spend about 10 hours modeling my house before it was turned into my house. It's a very cool, lofty type house right now, but this was before. So that's why the bathrooms are horribly nut to code, if anyone's noticing. Let's update this scene. So that's a very realistic thing. Someone might want, oh, I want someone to walk through my place, this, this model I've created, and see what it's like. Well, here's the problem. Where, you know, that how SketchUp interpolates between those two views, it blasts you outside, and you're blasting inside, and how do you deal with this? Well, you can either create a whole bunch of little scenes, like I could go up two steps, add scene, two steps, add scene, two steps, add scene. Okay, now I gotta start turning my head, turn my head, add scene. Um, that's too much work. I'll show you some plugins um, that make that a lot easier. In a pinch, though, uh, that's kind of what you got to do, though. Like the SketchUp, the animation in SketchUp, what you got to do is just really think about where you're adding those scenes and being really careful about turning. Um, but it's less work just to get one of the, you'll save your money's worth whatever some of those plugins cost. All right, so let me show you another thing that it's really, more to show you how it behaves. I don't want to say it's good or bad, but so I'm going to add, I'll update this scene here, and I'm going to orbit and zoom extents, isometric, zoom extents, update. So what I'm doing is I'm snapping a shot from each corner at exactly the same height. And by doing it this way, let's see. and scene, and one more. What I'm doing, if you're curious, is I'm using the default view, the isometric, which will always snap to the closest isometric view. It's not like front, top, left, or right, which are always gonna be looking the same way. That very first default view snaps you to the closest one, that's why it was doing that. Add. And while we're here, let's just do a front and a back. So here's my front view. And my back view. So if I'm if I'm animating via jumping between scenes, you'll notice with the front and back, my eye is looking straight across. So it's like I've, I've planted my view, I'm looking effectively parallel to the ground. If I do that same thing up here, and I'm gonna just jump to the opposite corner, I was kind of doing that like wobbly boat thing. Um, that is just, it's just built in, you can't really change it. Um, it's, just, it's just how SketchUp does it. But where that's a problem for me, um, I've been getting a lot into drone work. And with drones, these can, there's a lot of conventions I think we're gonna see, I'll bet you anything the next base camp, I'm gonna make a prediction, next base camp's gonna be all about drones. Let's see if, that, see if that happens. I don't know, I don't have any insider information. But when you fly drones and you're creating these missions, you've got, you've got points of interest which is essentially like a target. You've got a waypoint, which is a, like a keyframe, that's where you're going to, and you have a path, which is like a path in here. So I've, I've done some stuff with, my, uh, with our building that we just finished. I was just doing simple loops. I would just take up my drone, I could program in 200 feet up, 200 feet out, aim at the center, record a loop that takes you two minutes. And I thought, wow, man, that'd be pretty cool to like do that and then plug in, you know, take it into some video editing and when it wasn't quite done and have it rotate and then go into a SketchUp model. And I, I did this exact thing. I came up here and I just aimed down and then pretty soon it was just like all wobbly. So I haven't gotten back to trying to redo that, but I, I hope to soon. Um, all right, so is that, is that, does that make sense so far? Let me do this. Let me just clean these up. I'm gonna delete. And I believe you guys all have the stick of knowledge, right? The USB stick of knowledge. Did you guys get that or just the base camp or, or boot campers? My name is Matthew Chambers and you know, my folder, this model is on there if you do want to play with it. 
I've got some slightly updated ones that you know, just bug me. I could, I could give you a link to download those for the other things I'll be showing you. All right, I've got all those deleted. Let's, uh, I should not have deleted that last one, but oh well. So the very first time you add one, you have to go to view animation add scene, or you need to bring up one of your dialogue windows or your tray windows, which is called the configure scene window. Um, that is right here, window scenes, there we go. Looks like this. So this is important. So if we look here, these are very important things. These are the properties that every scene saves. It'll save your camera location, which is the most obvious. That's the easiest, not easiest to wrap your head around. Hidden geometry, invisible layers. Those act very similar to one another. Like if, you, if you're in a pinch, use hidden geometry. Just hide stuff. Like if I wanted to show the structure of this in a sequence, I would, and, and I didn't have them conveniently in layers, I would just right-click hide, right-click hide, right-click hide, save a, a layer, create a scene, and only save that property. Um, but a, a, a better practice is to, to organize them into layers and turn layers on and off. Active section planes, that's actually really cool. I'll show you that in a couple of minutes. Style and fog, shadow, and axes. So the things that really animate and don't animate here, your camera animates. Your, your hidden geometry does not. It won't like fade in, fade out. It'd be kind of cool if it did. It's just on off. Same with layers too. So there's a little side trick I like to do for that because it's kind of a nice to have things fade in. Um, the active section planes, those do animate. You'll see that here in just a minute. Styles as well. You can animate between styles. So if you have a, uh, let's see if I can get back out here. Let's just try that really quick. Um, if I get a little bit more of a, and interestingly enough, the, um, the PC version does a little bit smoother animation. So score one for the PC guys. So I'll do this kind of blueprinty techy look here and I'm going to add a scene. And then we're going to go to this kind of dreamy, sketchy look. And I will add a scene. So because I have the default, all of these turned on, if I jump between these, boom, boom, boom. You know, I'm going to test my theory here because uh, Do you guys want to know if, in fact, it does run smoother on Windows? It's always a good idea just to try things that you weren't really planning on trying, right? It's never failed. All right, so same model. I'm now in the Windows version. For the most part, they're, they're the same. All right, let's see what happens here. Where are my styles sorted? I believe I did that one. Add scene. Oops, scene sorry. I have to make sure that one is set to save. And this one, oh, fuck. Let's see here. It's so tiny, I can't see it. Oops, don't delete that. Eh, it's a little bit smoother, and I'm even running on a virtual machine, so. But point is, we're, we're animating, right, between two things. Let's get back out here. And because I saved all those properties, it, it zooms me back to that location. Let's say you only want to save that view, or I mean that the style changing and nothing else. What you would do is 
So I'm on this scene right here. I'm going to turn off everything except the style and fog and update that. And I'll do the same thing on this one. You'll notice this is taking a little bit of time and I'm kind of doing it for a reason because I really advocate, I personally like to use scenes Individually, like I'll, I'll create a, I'll create one SketchUp model that only has um, layers, like visible layers. So all of my scene tabs just turn on and off layers. I'll have one that's just for views. It's when I'm presenting, it's just easier. You can kind of package it all in one, but it it kind of turns into uh, quite a lot of work. So did I do that correctly? There we go. So now it's not changing all those other properties. It's only animating to and from the scene change, which is nice because on the fly, you might want to just have a certain angle that you want to crank out. So I, I want to talk briefly too, because I don't want to forget, like you got to do something with these animations. And especially if you have a really complicated model, you can't just load it up and have someone sit around your computer. You want to put it on a website. You want to put it into a presentation. Um, you can in SketchUp, export animation. And if you drill into this, uh, you'll see you've got a handful of options. The default maxes out at 1080, which in today's day and age is actually kind of not to that great resolution, but you can manually type in and create what you want. And think of the animations in SketchUp. I mean, the beauty of SketchUp is that it, it really blurs the line between presentation and design. They're kind of one and the same. Um, but it, just know that that's kind of a surefire way to get something that's, you know, if you export an animation, it might take a while, but you'll, you'll know what you're getting. Um, I do that for, you know, PowerPoint presentations and whatnot. One of the options in there, too, was um, image sequence. And there's a reason you might want to do image sequence. I'll show you that coming up. Just get reset here, waiting for time. I'll try to leave some time for questions at the end as well. Uh, not that I don't have all the answers, but I might know where to point you. Oops, I my default. Okay, now we're back in business here. Um, all right, let me show you first, and then, then I'll come back and show you how I did it. So in SketchUp, this is, uh, or this, this is in PowerPoint, and this is just an exported image. Um, and it's actually four images that I exported using the animation feature, and there's a reason I did that. But they're just four or five images, and I'm just using the fade feature. Every presentation package out there has fade as a transition. So, you know, this is kind of a nice way, that's a simple way, I'm not using any really high-tech rendering or exporting software. And remember, SketchUp won't, um, SketchUp won't do that. It doesn't animate visibility. It just animates the, um, your camera, your uh, sections, your shadows, of course, and in between scenes. And you know what? While we're here, we're just going to jump ahead, and I'll show you the other thing I'd like to show you today. Whoops. Why is it not playing? This is supposed to be an animation. Automatically. There it goes. So this isn't using sections, but I'm, if you've ever animated in sections in SketchUp, you notice something that's a little bit different. You can't really do this effect, this kind of ghosted, you know, x-ray transect type thing. And what's the, the use case of it? I don't know. I just thought it looked kind of neat. <laughs> but I will show you how to do this as well fairly easily. Let's go back over here. So in this model, what I've done is I've configured my scenes to only save the visible layer property. 
which is nice because I can go from all off, I can show the foundation, the exterior walls, the joists and beams, floors, walls, doors, etc. And so what I did with that image sequence, what I could do is save each one of these as an image sequence. You can always export as an image, but a little trick is to, because I'm not, I'm not really, I'm not animating anything. I'm not tweening between shadows or styles. If I export an animation, but I will select PNG, and I'll do transparent background. I don't want to loop to starting point, but this will just save one image for every scene. So it is, it's like the world's fastest animation. It's only gonna be five scenes. Let's go ahead and dump that in our downloads to see what happens. So there we go, those are my images. That just conveniently, which makes it easier to throw them together, it took, takes like 10 seconds just to drop these into PowerPoint or Keynote and do the transition fade, and it works out pretty well. One thing the Mac users can do in that, like in, in the movie, Mac users can export a transparent background, Windows users cannot. So there, now, now the, the field is leveled again. Um, Let's talk about sections. Let's go back over here. Animating sections. Um, it, on your main toolbar, SketchUp has uh, what's called a section tool, and it does what you would expect. You drop it on, and it becomes an entity that you can manipulate with your move tool, with your rotate tool, whatever. So I'm just going to move this in. I'm going to do one like this. And on my scenes, before I add my scene, there's mixed thoughts on this. This is, this is my, I wouldn't say this is a best practice as much as it's just the way I happen to do it. But I'm going to only save active section planes and hit add. And we'll call this section one. And then I'll go over here. I'll grab the section tool again. This time I'll do it this way. I'll grab my move tool. Move it back and add scene. Now, whenever you add scenes, it will inherit the properties of your previous one. So now I've got two scenes that I should be able to animate between. And you might want to mix and match. Maybe you want your section to always face the camera, so I want my view to, to move and, and align itself as, it, as it's cutting through the building. Um, you can do that. One thing with, uh, when you have, at, when you're using section planes in SketchUp, you see them, you see the big old planes here and they're numbered and that's what these three icons are for uh, up top. They're the, and I wonder, I don't know where they exist, uh, section planes, they are under the view menu option as well. But here's where we can turn off the actual section plane. The other things you can turn off is the actual section cut. So if you look at this wall over here, that's a, that's a new thing that's really nice with SketchUp is, and you can specify what color you want that to be. And you can hide the actual section. And those properties are saved with the style. And because I don't have style turned on, I'm not gonna see those when I go between the two here. All right, so Let's turn those back on. I'm gonna delete those and show you, I don't know, if you take one thing out of this, this, this will be worth the price of admission for, for this particular. If you ever wanna do a transect, like what I consider a, like not just a section that cuts it at an arbitrary spot, but like when on the video when I showed you slicing right through, it's a really kind of neat effect, especially in landscape if you're going through uh, um, topography. But the, the secret is to, group it, and you have one section outside of the group and one section inside of the group. And th that way you can have two sections at one time. So I'm going to group this section, and I'll just put this over here. Oops, I'm moving my building, I don't wanna do that. 
You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cheat here a little bit. I'm gonna draw two boxes that are five feet. Okay, the reason I did this, it's, it's easier to snap. This is like a temporary helper geometry that I can snap my, uh, my first section to. And I'll go over here and to edit a group in SketchUp or a component, you double click. So double click, now I'm inside of this component and I'm going to add another section. Pretty neat. So I'm going to update this first one. That is just saving that property, that section property of what I've got happened to be showing right now. Um, let's do this, go to scene two. It just takes them away because there are no active section cuts. And now I'll just do the same thing. You never move the actual section plane. You make a new one and then SketchUp just decides to go between the two. So there's that, so this. Let's update this. And let's turn off those planes because they're really kind of... If we really want to go slow, let's change settings. Give it 10 seconds. So that will take this transition to be 10 seconds of kind of just going through the building. And, and you guys remember how I did it the other way? Like how I got that effect? I'll just mention it really quick again. Um, I had, whoops, I should probably make one more here. Let's go, let's add one more scene. This one will not have any sections on it. Let's see, oops. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm double clicking on the actual section cut and turning it not, not active anymore. So I just want to make sure I got one without it. There we go. So what I would do if I wanted to reproduce that same effect that I had, I would export this image, export 2D graphic, but what's really important here, and I'll save you a lot of time, is to set your aspect ratio to be exactly what your video is going to export. SketchUp will crop it down for you. So if I did like 1080 by 19, no, is it 1920 by 1080? Whatever that standard is. I think it's 1920. And I would save this image. And then I would also export this video. And I won't do that just because it takes some valuable time up. But now I've got a still image of the whole thing that I can just put a transparency on. And I've got a, um, an, an animation that I just put underneath it in PowerPoint and it does that pretty cool effect. You know, I'm gonna try one other possible workaround here. It's just thought of here. I'm going to, no, that won't work either. Copy this. Let's see if I turn this one on. No, that won't work. I was gonna try to paste a ghost copy on top of it, but I don't think that's gonna, that's gonna work. All right, so at this point, um, do you guys have any questions just on the built-in stuff? I don't want to go through all the properties. The shadows are fairly straightforward. Um, yes? Is there a way to change dynamic components? Oh, that's a really good question. And I don't think there is, but there's plugins. But remember, so the question from Matt and from DC, right? Um, was can you, can you tie dynamic component state to a scene? I'm pretty sure you can't, which is, sounds bad, but the good news is there's a plugin I'll show you that will do that. Uh, just, and it's honestly easier, I think. Anything else right now? If there's more questions later too, we can uh, just fire them off. So here's, uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna open up This one. Oh, 
This is a slightly different one. Um, yeah. So the qu are you wondering if you have if you have the, like the same com component, but it's in different it's in different layers? Yeah. yeah, that works too. And in fact, that's a really common way to do it too. You can have um, you can have the same thing, but it's in different layers. But it wouldn't necessarily animate, though. I mean, unless you had six layers, and each layer has a different state of a door opening, for example. <laughs> um, okay, so let's do this. Let's open up the plugin number one, keyframe or extension number one, keyframe animation. It's called. And uh, just an FYI, if you if you do want to play with this on your computer, it is on the extension warehouse, but it just does not quite have the most recent version. There's some stuff that has to happen before that gets up there. But if you just Google, it's by a regular polygon is the name of the developer. And this is this is the tool right here. It's all it is. And let's see here. I want to go. What's that? Um, keyframe. I'll get you the exact keyframe animation. Well, this one I think I think I already programmed this one to do something. Okay, I've got three scenes. How this one works? It. It's kind of, the icons are a little bit, I don't know, they're not, they're not the, they don't make the most sense to me because there's a record. Record really means snapshot. It's like remember the state of the things I have selected. Play, it's not really play, it says play really means turn on this extension. So just keep that in mind. And all of these extensions have their own export options, but let's say I want to, why won't it let me select this? All right, so I have this wall selected. And you must do this one here and do the top as well. And the back. Okay, so I will hit record. Boom, that's all there is to it. Now, that's basically saying just remember where those are. And it's tied to this scene. So however this developer wrote this, you have to, have, oh, whoops, there you go. Now it's turning on. Bye, house. Um, <laughs> So that's, that's what I did earlier. I forgot which file I had open here. Sorry about that. So let's just fast forward. Just pretend I just moved all of these into space and I hit save. But so what I did is I just, I selected everything, saved it, and then I went to the next scene and updated it. I don't know why I didn't do that before, but now if I go between these scenes, it's animating. It's kind of neat because I can, I can navigate around it as it's, it's doing this. But let's add a scene here. Let's try this. Let's right click, add. And this one should be remembered on one because that's where it's at. And I'm going to rotate this. I hope this has never happened, but let's do this one too. All right, so I will select both of those walls. Those, it has to be a group or a component. Hit the record button, I'm on, and I'm on a new scene. Those are the important things. Now I should be able to, there we go. And I have my transition set to really slow on this one as well, that's why it's, it's doing that. I am, so, so the only thing I'm modifying is moving stuff. Let me make that transition just a little bit faster. Something's messy with this because it's set to four. I don't know why it's going so slow, too many things open. But all I'm doing, so the plugin is doing the heavy lifting. I'm just moving things. So like let's say the roof here. I'm going to select scene four because this is the scene I want to snapshot its placement at. So I have that scene active. I'm trying to grab the roof here. And it's not doing it because I got too much. Whoops. I 
I hit it down here accidentally. Okay, so I'll just move this, and I, I grabbed a handful of things in here. And you know what, maybe I, want, uh, maybe I don't want all that to go that high, I'll just move this thing down to here. And I guess I got my lights here too, so let's get the skylights. And I'm using shortcuts just for the, the sake of the presentation, um, but the concepts should be pretty easy to grasp. So what I want to do is select the things that I want to snapshot, which is now like the plugin is doing all the heavy lifting. Hit the, hit the record button, and now those are saved on that scene. Does that make sense? This one is the easiest animation plugin out there, I think, for just very simple things. Doors opening. Are any of these functions uh, native and scheduled? Not really. I mean, they're, 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 not, they're not native on the user end, but they're kind of like the core code is written such that all of these things are really easy. Again, that's, you know, for, for programmers to do, but no, like this particular, this type of function, not that I'm aware of. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and jump to the next one. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you could, yeah. I think if, I, if I'm understanding right, like I, these scenes, you know, I'm glad you asked that question, Matt, because uh, these scenes I've only strangely got active section plane, but if I wanted to also save my camera location, I can. So I'm going to update that one, and then I'll ro rotate over here and update that one. And all I'm doing is just turning on the properties. So if I update that one, you see now it's saving two things. It's going between my camera views and the, the placement. So this plugin really gives you a, an eighth property to save, which is position of the things, the groups in your model. The question up front? No, uh, I think I get the question. The question is, like, is this embedded in the file? Um, if I were to like save this file and give it to you right now, you'd be able to open it, but you would not be able to animate it without that plugin. But if you downloaded the plugin, you could. And if I were to save this right now and give it to anyone, it, it's essentially stuck <coughs> like this. Like, it's not going to animate back and forth. Does that make sense? But it doesn't break your model. Um, and I can even temporarily turn it off. That's what this, the big play button does here. So if I click that and it doesn't actually turn, I think it's off. So now it's only transitioning between the native SketchUp properties, which in this sense, this case is just the camera. So ask that again. I don't know if I follow. Oh no, this is like, it's, it's on here forever now, as long as I keep this on my machine. Yep. Yep. So, all right, for time, let's jump to another one here that I have ready. Yeah, you could. You could, but I would say this one would probably even be better. Yes. Okay, yep. Yeah. Is that is that uh, is that what you're saying you can do or Oh, definitely, yes. Yeah, no, that, so the, the question comment is, if I'm, if I'm hearing right, it's, 
you know, these are a bit contrived. They're, they're very SketchUp-like, and they're, they're whatever you guys want to do with it, right? And, and um, they're relatively cheap, too, for what it's worth. Um, but, but yeah, if you want, like, really, really nice animation, you're going to have to shell out the big bucks for something like Lumion or just know how to use uh, Premiere. With this, you don't. Or with... Yeah, but does that do 3D? That, uh, I don't think you can take a 3D model into that. Well, they wouldn't work the same way because, because it, it doesn't, it's not quite that simple because it doesn't know the model. It doesn't, it would, it's, it's like you could take an image or video, but it, it doesn't have any 3D geometry in that file anymore. So in that sense, you wouldn't be able to, that I'm aware of. I know, you, I know Adobe's got some 3D recognizing um, capabilities. But hey, so for, for, for time here, let's do this. Do you guys remember, uh, let me just show you really quick again. I'm going to use the default SketchUp views here. So I quickly added a scene. And I'm going to add another scene here. This is just in SketchUp. I'm walking into this place. I want to check it out. Maybe move my office here. So I want to walk in and go to this back area and look up. I've added three scenes, I'm rushing to my meeting, and I sit down with the client, and all of a sudden I'm like slowly going through space. So something is goofy with mine. Somehow I somehow I need to restart SketchUp because my transitions are really slow right now. But here's that issue too. So I'm even I'm even going to a um, there we go. So I, I, I made an intermediate scene in SketchUp. This is what I recommended if you're in a pinch. But even going from here to that next one, it still like shoots me outside. All right, so let's open up. So this one, I used this tool called SU Animate. So we're done with um, the keyframe animation. SU Animate. It's got two components that uh, are really kind of set it apart here. You have this dialog, which is your table-based animation. And what it means is it will list animations in sequence in a table format. And it also has dual palettes, keyframe animation. No, uh, so you animate where are you at? There it is. Boom this icon, this tool set here. And if I, if, I, uh, if I click through these, this is really, this is almost like if you've flown any drones and you've done any missions, it's really easy to wrap your head around. And even if it's not, it's also easy. So it uses paths. You draw a path. Along that path, you can animate the actual camera or you can animate the object. So if I drew a ball in here and... Um, so this is doing really super simple here. I'm just going to draw a line. And I'm going to, I'll make this a group. And I'm going to, this is important. So if you want to remember anything from this, you have to give things an instant name. So I'm going to just call this thing. And, and you'll see why here in a second. So I created a group. I have a line. You know, let's do something funnier than that line. That was, you can do a straight line, but I'm going to do... So there's... I just skipped a step. You can use the tool itself to create a path. Otherwise, you can pick a path and then right-click. But for here, I'll say I want 20 frames, and I want to rotate the object along the path. I think I forgot to click the... I think I forgot to click the uh, thing, so let's see here. Nope, that's different. Hey, this is the other one I wanted to show you. So this one's kind of quick, but... Oh, I know what it's doing. It's doing both of my animations here. Okay, what you're seeing now is the animation I very quickly made with this tool. But I, what I wanted to show you was this one here. Let's try this one again. Well, that's a really good question. Uh, 
And I, I apologize, I did this one wrong because we're gonna have to do it this way here. So shape, right click, create scene animation, save. Now if I did this right, that box should move along that line. I really hope it does. There we go. Yay. Um, so, so, okay, but the, the concept is, okay, so I was up all night practicing that. <laughs> you can create paths, and you can have things move along paths. Um, you can take your camera and have that move along, and then you can mix and match the both of them. So when you do a camera animation, you can set a target. So right now, this one, um, I don't believe, I, I did, I didn't do a target animation with this. I'm running out of time to show you the other one. But what I did, the third one, which is a new feature with their most recent update, is called keyframe animation. And it is like a better, it's like, an, it's like SketchUp scenes, except it doesn't shoot you outside of the building. And if I change this frame, so you remember on uh, that one I just showed you a little bit ago where where even with this flag to the next flag to the next, just using SketchUp and I still shot outside of the building. This one, I'll play it again, but just watch it from the start here. So it goes in and I pick the same three points. So it's not any more work. The only other work is, um, is installing the, the software. And you can make multiple paths. So if I wanted to stop and pause at one spot, you just, create a different path. And that's when, it, when I say table-based animation, it just goes down this table and plays all of these views. So this was just, this was, this was me walking through and saving the, key, saving the keyframe with the tool. And that, that, is, uh, that is pretty simple. I do a uh, new keyframe animation, and it does just that. Um, it brings up another dialogue where you just move your camera, hit save, move your camera, hit save, move your ha camera, hit save. So there's the keyframe. Then there's the path animation. And the path animation is where you can animate an object and you can animate your camera and you can animate your camera following an object. Let's see if I've got, how much time, let's see how quick I can do this. I've got nine minutes. Um, Let's see. All right. So, so for uh, for you know my I design our trade show booths, and we have a couple different setups for the biotech company that I, I'm a part of. And depending on which shows we go to, we need to sit down and try to think. Well, where's the best spot? What's it going to look like when people are coming out of the whatever the food area or the bathroom or whatever? So I have this kind of it's just kind of a ghost um, generic trade show area. But really quickly here, I'll try a scene. Uh, path animation. So with this tool, I'm going to click the path tool. I'll start out here, come in here, I'll go down this way, and I'm going to walk down here. And it shot me over there for some reason. Uh, oh, got the bug. Um, it's okay, I can still do this in eight minutes. Maybe. Yeah, you know, it could. That's a good question. Like, could you could you create a path and then send it to someone to create like a different or better animation? Yeah, you sure could. Um, Let's see, where's my dialogue? View two palettes. Let's try this again. So I'm going to pick my path. I'm going to go out here, in here, go over here, go over here. Oh, it does not like that at all. Okay. Too many, too many things going on. Um, so I guess for time, you know, I do have one thing I'll just finish with. My, my first discovered SU Animate was in 2015. I was in Boulder, Colorado, and I got in a really, really goofy, goofy car accident. 
And the cops were there, and they were like, how in the heck did the cars end up like this? Um, and I used this tool to actually animate what, how we got into that crazy position. <laughs> so this is 20, 2009, I guess. Yep, 2009. So this was actually done in SketchUp. Um, and then I exported a, a video. I'm the orange car. I'm sure you guys wanted to see this, the GMC Envoy, which I later found out was owned uh, by the wife of a, a litigation lawyer. <laughs> so I really thought I was screwed. But um, again, this is just SketchUp, just an aerial image, and I had these really these, like simple shapes. I'm just happily cruising along 23rd, turning in, sharp turn, I stop, oops, and then uh, she hits me, then we both get off the road, and then that's how we ended up with really weird, like when the cops came there, just like, I don't understand how your car's collided right here, so there we go. So with that, I suppose we gotta start, I got five minutes. Any questions that you guys would like to Oh gosh, yeah, the third one. Oh, hey, look at this, here's my video even too. Yeah, so the third one, good question, let me show you that. The third one is the free one, and you know what, SketchUp's probably gonna crash again, but it's called Frito 6 Animator. And it does a ton of stuff. I just recommend that you look into it. The interface, it's really, he's got awesome, awesome videos. The interface is really, uh, really big, but that's how I created this one. I, I grabbed my house, I selected a sequence, and you can do everything from movement to twist to twirl to explode to scale, and I just picked this, the explode option, and you have a little timeline, and this, this, didn't, this took like two minutes to actually create. Um, but that third one, yeah, the Frito 6 is that one, so. Uh, Matt? Oh, good question. More that are for joints. One I would recommend, um, it's maybe not engineering, but it's, it's, it's interesting if you're into physics, is um, it's, I think it's called MS Sketchy Physics. Something like Sketchy Physics. There was one old version, and then there's a newer one. I forget which, which one is it called? MS. MS? Yeah, that one is really cool where you can, you can actually create joints and set constraints on what rotates and what folds, and you can drop things off of, uh, off of tables and whatnot. So. But, but nothing like SolidWorks that I know of where you can actually parametrically tell it that, you know, a joint is related to something else, so. Um, all right, well, I'm, you know, I'm around. Oh, question up front. What is the program to make the boards The really easy one is keyframe animator or, or, or dynamic components. That's the built-in one. But honestly, it'll take people less time to download the plug-in to, to learn dynamic components, so. Um, all right, yeah, just, just track me down anytime if you have any other questions. Uh, oh, and then, yeah, I'll let you guys. Thank you very much. Um, enjoy the rest of base camp. Uh, I'll see everyone around. And yeah, if anyone else has any other questions, uh, you just come up and ask while I'm packing up. <laughs>